In this video today, we will be going through Quagmire's entire family tree, from his root in Africa to his many, many children. All right! All right! All right! All right! It's a very messy one, folks, so let's get into it. Let's begin with Quagmire's English ancestor. In the season 7 episode, Peter's Progress, a fortune teller tells the gang about their past lives. And when she touches Peter's palm, she tells him the story of Griffin Peterson, who was banished to the New World by a guy called King Stuart. On their way to America, we meet potentially Quagmire's ancestor, who was sent away after being caught sleeping with an underage virgin to cure his puff penis. It's here where we can see where Quagmire may get his depravity from. It must be genetic. Would you just sit down and go to the bathroom already? Anyway, once landing ashore, they establish the town of Quahog, and together with Griffin and Joe, they build the town from scratch. Next we have Quag Dingo Quagmire, who lived in Africa along with Peter and Joe's ancestors. But when the slave traders came, i.e. Cleveland's ancestor, Quag Dingo was imprisoned and sent to the New World. Now, we don't really know what ultimately happened to him after this, but what we do know is that Nay Griffin married the plantation owner's daughter and they ran off together to start a whole new life of freedom. Let's just hope the Quag Dingo escaped too. In the Peter's Progress episode I mentioned earlier, when the fortune teller touches Quagmire's palm, she is horrified to learn that he was none other than Jack the Ripper. Giggity. Now, it is pretty unclear if Quagmire is actually a descendant of the Whitechapel killer or not, but either way, I thought it was pretty important to include it. Look, it's Family Guy, we've just gotta go with it, man. Glenn and the gang hang out at the Drunken Clam every single day, and this tradition has been going back decades, well before the guys were even born. In the season 11 episode, Save the Clam, we see a flashback to the turn of the century, showing their great granddads enjoying a cold one at the very same bar. It always tickles me how these characters' histories have always been intertwined. To the clam! Yeah. Skipping ahead a couple of generations, we come to Ida Davis, originally named Dan Quagmire, and her former wife, Crystal. Ida is a trans woman who wasn't around much during Quagmire's childhood, due to being in the Navy, and when Ida was away, Crystal certainly came out to play. In fact, she slept with so many people that Quagmire actually learned his ABCs by naming every guy his mother slept with. Walter, Xavier, Yaz, and Zeke. It seems that without a dad and bearing witness to Crystal's shenanigans, Glenn's respect for women only dwindled. So much so that later on in life, when arrested for unknowingly sleeping with an underage girl, he definitively blames his mother for his sexual depravity. Together, Ida and Crystal have three children, Glenn, Brenda and Gary. But we haven't yet met Gary, all we know is that he's deaf. Actually, I have a brother, Gary Quagmire. Oh. Unlike Brenda, who has appeared in a couple of episodes, and was in an abusive relationship with her boyfriend Jeffrey, so sick and tired of seeing his poor sister being mistreated, Quagmire and his buddies took Jeffrey out for a camping trip, where they planned to kill him. But this douchebag got the drop on them and choked out Quagmire, but after a lifetime of rough erotic activities, it had trained Glenn into withstanding heavy choking. I choke myself every day, you bastard! Through either his sister or his brother, he also has a niece called Abby. We find this out in the season 9 episode called Road to the North Pole, where he takes her to see a mall Santa. Now we come to the man himself, and I have pretty much covered all of Glenn's life in my previous videos, including my timeline about him, as well as the video How Family Guy Changed Quagmire Forever, so I won't go into too much detail now about it. But what I will say is that Quagmire is one sex crazed pervert, who has pretty much banged everything and everyone in the town of Quahog. Yeah, that's right. I'm weird. But there have been a couple of times where he settled down and even tied the knot. The first time was in the episode I Take the Quagmire, and in it Quaggy falls for Peter's maid Joan and he wastes no time in proposing to her, and relationship life had changed the playboy for the better, transforming him into a pretty regular guy. We brought you guys a bottle of wine. Ooh, matrache! I like our friends. 
Hell, he's not even interested in Peter's wedding gift, i.e. the Statue of Liberty's foot. This cost me $437,000. Don't ask me how I got it. But I know another guy who would really appreciate this gift. It's not until he's married that he realises what a terrible, terrible mistake he's made. And when Joan threatened their lives should he leave her, he did the only thing he could think of and fake his death. But luckily it did work out for him when death claimed Joan instead, just in time. His next wife was a lady called Charmise, a sex worker who he married during a wild bender. And in a desperate attempt to get out of the marriage, he claims to be gay and even goes as far as almost sleeping with Peter just to prove it. And thankfully, Charmise does grant him a divorce in the end. Good luck to you, sweetie. And good luck to you, Charmise. And although he never had any children with these ladies, he has produced a whole of offspring over the years. He has a son in Madrid. Me voy a ver los toros, giggity, giggity, giggity. And a trip to Atlantic City 20 years ago resulted in twin daughters, the first of which he sees in a strip club much later. In the season 7 episode, Tales of a Third Grade Nothing, Peter is sent back to school to finally graduate. And when Quagmire comes by to pick up his buddy, he is shocked to discover that he has several illegitimate children at that school. Daddy? Oh God! But this revelation doesn't stop him from hooking up with a teacher in the staff room, which no doubt results in another baby for him to ignore. But our guy Quagmire doesn't discriminate. It's not just humans he hooks up with, in addition to having a thing for monkeys. Man, they got some sexy monkeys down there. He also weds a giraffe, and nine months later, a terrifying human hybrid enters the world. Giraffity! Yeah, see, that's not mine. And although Quagmire largely chooses to ignore his kids, he has acknowledged some. The first was in the episode Quagmire's Baby, where a baby girl shows up on his doorstep and is called Anna Lee. Giggity. Oh, I say that. But of course, being a bachelor all of his life, Quagmire had no idea how to look after a baby. And when she interfered with his sex life, that was a huge no-no. So he put her up for adoption. It was a decision he would quickly come to regret, but when he sees how happy she is with her new family, he decides she is far better off without him, at least until she turns 18. Hey, who knows, maybe I'll bump into her in 18 years. What? Yeah, it's super, super weird, and let's just say she is a whole lot better without him. Anyway, he did make a proper good parenting when crossing paths with another one of his daughters called Courtney. It's at a high school prom where he meets a girl and takes her back to his place, but after she lets slip a little giggity, he smashes open his trusty emergency DNA kit, which confirms that his date is in fact his very own daughter. You're... you're my daughter! Oh my god! Not only does this open up a potential court case, but also a potential theory. Is Quagmire's giggity a genetic tick? Oh, oh, giggity! So, after discovering a brand new daughter, he takes fatherhood a bit more seriously this time. He goes to her gymnastics, takes her camping, and when his bar charms are being a bit crass about women, he even scolds them. It's 2019. Time-tested jokes like that are now offensive and not funny at all. Later on in the episode, they get trapped in a forest fire, but luckily they are rescued. But even still, we haven't seen or heard from her since. But for now, that's all of his children we know of so far, as I'm sure there's a whole lot of other hundreds of quaggies running around out there in the world. And so that comes to the end of the video. Please hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps me out and it's totally free. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.